Have you ever gotten an email from a marketer that says, there are just two spots left in the program. Apply now, join now, sign up now. There's two spots left. And when I get those emails, I, un I know, I mean, all of us know that we, like, there's not only two people who are getting the email, right? There are thousands of people getting the email. So it makes me wonder if there are only two spots left in the program, and I am one of thousands of people who could sign up, how does it make, let's say there are a thousand people, then if there's two people who join, then how do the other 998 people feel who weren't able to join? And what does the marketer think that they should feel? Well, let me answer the question for you. You should feel left out if you don't join the program. And you should therefore feel bad that you don't get the benefit of the program because the program has probably been hyped up. Oh, this is the most amazing thing. It'll change your life. It'll change your business. It'll change your health. It'll change your relationships, whatever it is. And you have to join because otherwise you'll be left out. Do you want to be left out? Of course, none of us want to be left out. But that is one of the core, most common things that happen in marketing today is they use the fear of missing out, otherwise known as FOMO, F-O-M-O. -O. Scarcity, limitation, fear, you know, of missing out. And it works. That's why marketers keep doing it. If I scare you into signing up because otherwise you'll be left out, of course you'll more likely sign up. We are human beings. We have evolved as to be tribal creatures. We don't want to be excluded or isolated. None of us do. So marketers use the fear of missing out to get to you. Now, my question is, is that required? Do you need to use the fear of missing out to sell things? No, you don't. Okay, this is the problem is that if you've learned from these marketers, you think, well, that's, you have to do that. Otherwise, people don't buy. Not true. Look at my marketing. People are buying from me left and right. Well, hopefully, I don't use a fear of missing out. Okay, please let me know if you feel the fear of missing out sometimes on my things. I know I have um, online courses that actually have a start date because I teach them live, but you can buy them. Did you know you can buy my online courses anytime you want? I don't say, hey, you better sign up now, otherwise you're gonna miss out on. No, I just say, hey, it starts tomorrow. If you're interested in taking part, great. If not, I think you know that you can buy it later. Maybe some of you don't realize that, but you can buy it anytime you want. There's no, there's no rush, there's no, you know. Um, so, but that's what most marketers do is they make you feel the fear and act out of fear. And when marketers are doing this, and by marketers, I mean you and me, are you trying to build your business? Well, you're our marketer. Okay, that's what I mean by marketer is us in our mode of expanding our business, selling services or products. So you are a marketer. You're one of the marketers I'm talking about. Now, hopefully you're doing it in a, in a kinder way, in a way that's uplifting humanity instead of pulling humanity down into more and more fear and scarcity and, and limitation. So, so the next time you see somebody say two spots left uh, and they're emailing, you know, they're not, they're not asking you personally, but they're emailing their whole list. I hope you will either reply to them and, and ask them, hey, you know, it'd be great if you didn't use scarcity and limitation to market your services. You don't have to. If your services and products are something that I want uh, and you explain them to me properly, show me why it's, it might be beneficial for me, then I'll get it at my own time. And yes, if there is an actual start date to something, let me know what the start date is, but please don't motivate me out of fear to do something because that's not required, okay? Motivate me out of love, not out of fear. And by love, I don't mean hype it up and like, oh my God, I'm drooling and I can't help but buy this thing because it's the best thing in the whole world. I have to get this. No, that, not out of love. Out of love for my own growth, right? Out of love for my own transformation. And maybe out of love for you, because I, I really enjoy your presence and I would like to take part in this program. 
to you know um, hang out with you and to benefit from the the transformation that you provide, but not not out of fear, okay? And if they don't reply or if they if they disagree, then maybe you should re, you know leave their email list unsubscribed because do you want to support a business that only sees the possibility of motivating their audience out of fear, right? So um, that's pretty much the entire message today, actually, I wanted to share with you. But uh, let me see, I have, I, oh, another thing is, um, uh, it's, okay, I, I wanted to also share this idea, this, this analogy of popping corn, popcorn, okay? You're, let's, you're microwaving popcorn, let's say, or it just doesn't matter how, how you're cooking popcorn. You know how popcorn, you know, kind of starts out very, you know, a lot of popping happens, you know, and it's, it's very exciting. And then towards the end of uh, most of the kernels have been popped, at the end, you still get like a few pops here and there, right? The question is, how long do you keep the fire going? Because if you keep the fire going, you'll be able to pop one or two more, but you'll possibly burn 20 or 30 kernels of corn. Is it worth it? And that's what the marketers are doing is they're like, oh, we're going to keep the fire going. We're going to send you a lot of promotional emails because we might just get one or two more sales out of this. And I don't, we don't care about you, the audience. We care about our own sales. You, we're using you for our profits. So uh, we're going to keep the fire going, keep the promotions going, get a few more sales, even though it's alienating or annoying a bunch of people in our audience. Don't be like that because you don't have to be like that. The reality is, if your offer is a good fit for your audience, it's like popcorn, pop, 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 pop. A lot, of, a lot of things happen. And if not a lot of corn is popping, you're just burning a lot of corn, you might pop a few. So it's really about the offer and the fit with the audience. It's not about how hard you push them to buy. Does that make sense? So don't burn your corn, just pop, 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 and then when it gets down to very low, stop your promotions because they've seen it enough. I mean, the only exception, like I said, is if you actually have a program starting, hey, like I just sent an email today, it starts tomorrow, my course on book creation. If you don't haven't signed up, you might want to, you know, but hopefully you know that you can buy the recordings later. Um, you don't have to sign up. Uh, so out of love, and out of awareness, yes, your audience needs to be aware of what you're offering. That's part of your problem. Some of you are like, well, you're, you don't tell your audience once a month. Have you told your audience this month that your services are available? Okay, if not, they just think that you like to post things on Facebook. That's all they think you do all day is you like to post, you like to write articles and you like to post videos on Facebook. That's all you do. No. You also sell something. You sell services, you sell products. Well, when was the last time they found out about that? Once a month is a nice rhythm. So please do that once a month. But you don't have to do it like, you know, three times a week like some marketers do it, right? So, um, and the last thing is when I post the article to, to this video later, I will give you some more details on how I launch things. Um, but basically I send two to three emails, that's it to launch any particular course. Two to three, I mean, most marketers send two to three every week for weeks on end to sell something. I sell, I send two to three, period. One email to announce that it's available and then one email at the end when the course is starting. And then maybe one email in the middle if it's selling really well and I wanna make sure that people haven't, who haven't heard about it, hear about it. But if after the first email, if after the first promotion, something isn't selling, it's a pretty good sign that it's not a good fit for the audience. The offer is not the right fit for the audience or you don't have a large enough audience. You need to focus on audience building some more. That could be, or it, it could be that you haven't done enough fan interviews or you haven't understand your, you don't understand your audience well enough to know what to create for them. So, so it's not about forcing it down their throats. It's about testing it. If it pops very naturally, then it's a good offer. If it doesn't pop very naturally, maybe you send one more email, maybe you send one more promotion on your on, on social media, but that's it. That's it. It's it's something that's meant to be, that's 
a, a good a welcome to your audience an offer that is well loved will have its own life have its own life we don't doesn't have to be pushed so um, I hope this is helpful and as always I'm open to your questions and comments and remember we don't have to send those emails two spots left what about the other 800 people who can't sign up they, sh they should feel bad well if you make them feel bad that's the feeling they have and actually I'll say one more thing part of the reason marketers make you feel bad oh you better sign up two spots left even though if there's only two spots left and 800 people getting the email or 8,000 or 80,000 getting the email the reason why they want to make you feel bad is because they want to control you do you want to be controlled by marketers if you don't want to be controlled be very aware of when they are making you feel bad they're making you feel scarce they're making you feel afraid that if you don't sign up then you will miss out they're making you doubt yourself about what you what your own your own decision process you better sign up now so I'm gonna you know give you all these amazing bonuses marketers are trying to control you do you want to be controlled well hopefully yes you want to be controlled by your own free will and by your own higher self that's what you really want to be controlled by not by someone else's manipulation of you which happens every single day look at your emails look at your newsletters right now they are trying to control you they are trying to manipulate you if you feel any negativity okay like if you feel either any negativity scarcity fear of missing out that's a big sign and also if you feel like drooling like if you feel like oh my god this thing is like the best thing since sliced bread you should be very careful also because that is almost certainly not true they are using hype right how many of a hundred buyers of this thing how many fulfill the promise of the sales page of the sales email two five out of a hundred if they're lucky maybe 10 to 15 out of 100 well what about the 80 85 others who bought the program who didn't get the experience that's being sold in the sales email this is why I try not to use hype my latest course for example you, you may notice I sell it by saying hey come and learn how I do my own books not join this program so that you will be able to write a bestseller in blah 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 you know all this BS that's being happening in your inbox right now from a lot from most of the businesses out there right so be aware be conscious of how you are being manipulated in your feelings as you read emails as you look at videos as you look at sales pages as you you know look consider a program or an offering how what are, what emotions are, are they bringing you through and realize that if it is either negative or if it's drooling like this is the best thing ever you are being manipulated and 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 they are overcompensating for their desperation and their fear they're overcompensating and so it's like everybody's losing everybody is losing they are losing because they are using they are um, feed they're basically they're letting their hungry ghost their inner hungry ghost take over please Google hungry ghost okay this is a real thing um, it's a spiritual phenomenon and most of most people most of us when, when we have the hungry ghost within us don't even realize that's what's taking over at the moment but so much of marketing is hungry ghost driven okay and then they're turning you into a hungry ghost by having you feel the fear of missing out or the drooling the hype you know that this is the best thing in the world um, so let's take the middle way you know let's kind of come to a balance let's come to a groundedness of emotions and a free will and make decisions from the higher self make decisions in a calm way not in a oh my god I gotta sign up now kind of way so as a consumer as a buyer as someone who spends money you have the power to either vote for those kinds of marketing uh, you, you give them money because you're, you're desperate and you're like well I have to this is the best thing ever you've just you're feeding your hungry ghosts and you're feeding theirs as well you don't have to you have an alternative please please know that you have an alternative they are not the only program they are not the only product there are so many out there ask me ask me what other programs are out there okay and I will I will let you know and I will help you out
to find the right program, to find the right coach, to find the right product or service to help you, to move you forward in your life, health, wealth, relationships, whatever it is you're trying to, you're trying to grow. Okay. There are healthier alternatives that actually fulfill the promise because they don't use hyped up promises. So I hope this is helpful. And thanks for those who were able to join me here, Captain and Yule and Michelle and Jean. Um, thank you so much. And uh, Jean just wrote a comment here about how um, she's about to write an email to her previous. Oh, and, and if you only have a few spots left, I should say, and I'm going to say a lot more in the article that I post later about this. But yeah, sometimes I do have a few spots left. But I don't send the email out to everybody because, like I said, two spots left, five spots, 10 spots, it's going out to 100 or 500, 5,000 people. How do the other people feel? They just feel bad. That's all. So don't do that. Instead, send it specifically. I send it. If I have two spots left, Gene, you will hear about it. You will, you know, Michelle, you will, Captain, you guys will hear about it. You know, like I will send it very specifically to a few people, you know. You know, respectfully, yes, maybe there are two spots left and I will, I will, I will send it out to five people, okay, who are basically look at the thing that you are selling. What's one level below that? Send it to the people, specifically a few people who bought that level. So if you're, bought, if you're selling one-to-one, -one, send uh, the two spots left to five of, specifically five of the people who bought your group program. If you're selling a group program, send you know five spots left send it to specifically to seven to ten of the people who bought your do-it-yourself product your you know your standalone product if you're selling a standalone product you would like to sell 10 more send you know maybe that at that point sent you know standalone product you, you there's no 10 spots left that's ridiculous you can sell, sell a thousand so send it out to your whole list but when there really are a few spots left send it out to the, the level below uh in, in terms of your your um your ladder of offerings, okay, send it to the level below, but specifically, you know, two spots left. Hey, Gene, please let me know by Monday. Please let, let me know by tomorrow. Um, I want to, I'm, I'm, I'm inviting you first before I invite some others. So uh, please let me know as soon as possible by tomorrow, if at all possible, if you want one of the two spots. And of course, I'm only going to send it to people that I think honestly might, are, I feel are ready for it and might actually um, want to do it. Does that make sense? So don't send it out to your list. Send it out just to specific people. Um, now, uh, if you are out of time, let's say, and you, you have to send it out to your list, then, then do it this way. There are only five spots left of the workshop. Um, if you would like to join us for this instance, please sign up here. If you can't join us, or the spots are filled, um, there will be a, the next one in you know, January or something like that. And let them know. So to, you can choose either to come to the one that starts tomorrow, it starts next week, uh, or come to the one in January. So it's very generous, and you might be af afraid. Of course, there's your, your fear, your hungry ghost is saying, but wait, but George, 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 they're going to just say, I'm going to come to the one in January. No. The people who actually want help now will say, good, it's starting tomorrow. Good, it's starting next week. Good, I'm so glad. I don't have to wait till January. I don't have to wait till next month. See, so many of us are under the impression that we have to create scarcity because otherwise people won't do anything. People will just do something the next time. But if you let people know what the rhythm is, you give it up to them. You leave it up to the universe. You leave it up to their free will. We need to practice giving others the opportunity to exercise their free will. And you know what? If they just keep delaying and procrastinating and they just never sign up because they always think, I'll sign up for the next one, it's not your fault. And it's not even your responsibility to make them, to force them to sign up with all kinds of scarcity and hype tactics, which is what the marketers teach us to do, right? You see what I mean? So and and um surrender that's the ultimate spiritual exercise and i think business is really just a stage for spiritual exercise okay i'm sharing my personal beliefs here and some of you don't believe that but i i that's it you know we we will always be taken care of do you believe that you're going to be taken care of 
That is the essential question that allows you to step out of scarcity and into abundance and into generosity and into true sustainability for your business, for your audience building, for your brand building, is do you believe you will be taken care of no matter what? You can't see when the next client is coming around. Do you believe you'll be taken care of? Oh, I, you need to return to that belief of yours. However you return, how do you return to your belief of abundance? Do you have a practice? Do you meditate? Do you journal? Do you dance? Do you, you know, go talk to a friend? How, do you go to, go to church? Do you listen to music, spiritually inspiring music? How do you return to the feeling of abundance and the feeling of understanding that, yes, I will, no matter what happens, I will be taken care of. Do you believe that? That is the essential question. And no other marketer, marketing teacher is probably, not no other. I hope more business teachers and marketing teachers are, are, are suggesting that question first. You know, that, that's the essential question before you decide what kind of marketing tactics you're going to use. Do you believe that you're going to be okay, no matter what? And do you believe that doing the right thing is always the right thing? Therefore, because you're gonna be taken care of, so why not do the right thing? Oh, I don't know when the next five people are going to come to my workshop. It's okay. You do your work of announcing it uh, in a very kind way, in a non-scarcity way, and let the universe take care of the rest. You know, let people make their own decision. And guess what? If people aren't signing up, it's not them and it's not you. It's the offer. You haven't made the offer interesting enough. That's the work that you also need to do besides the abundance work inside. The work of, can, you, can I make this offer more interesting sounding? Not hype, but is it, a, is it really what people want? Is it really what people want? If people want something and you offer it, all you need to do is whisper. You don't even need to say what the deadline is. Hey, I've got this thing now. This is exactly what you're looking for. Oh my God, that's exactly what I'm looking for. And if you believe you can fulfill the promises and you're not using hype, gosh, that's it, right? So anyway. That's all I want to say uh, for today. Thanks for your comments and questions. So thanks, Alexandra, um, Alexandra for joining, and Molly as well. And uh, Molly wrote, um, so that I just opened a membership site for $10 of founding members. The only FOMO I'm using is the, the cost will go up to $27 once I have a few months of content established. It feels more comfortable to charge less while I'm getting started, give everyone an opportunity to get in on a great deal. Molly, that's a great point. You know, I don't think that's, um, I don't, yeah, you can, you, can, you can frame it as FOMO, which I hope you don't, or you can frame it as I'm, I'm thanking the founding members. As a founding member, I, I, I want to give you a, gift of being able to join the program at ten dollars a month which is an, an amazing deal and you know Molly, you may want to consider increasing that price point maybe maybe not but but yeah so instead of like oh it's going to go up to 27 before you before you know it or you know by this time um just say hey if you want to be be a founding member that's great if not then please join us at you know 27 dollars a month 30 don't uh, the other thing i'll say is you know you don't have to use psychological pricing 27 you know, just do 30, okay? Um, look up psychological pricing. That's another way of manipulating and con controlling people, which we don't need to do. We don't need to do it. You'll get a few more sales with psychological pricing, but it also creates skepticism and, um, yeah, some off feeling of offness. 27, 47, 97, those are off. This feels off. Why? Oh, it's because they're trying to manipulate you. Did you know that? The 27s, 47s, 45, 95, Whatever weird number, now I make my numbers even. $60, $45. Now, the fives are more acceptable. 95 is questionable. Because like, tell me 100. The reason why it's the 27s, 47s is because they're short-circuiting your decision-making process about budgeting. Because 97, oh, sounds beautiful, amazing. Oh, no, no, it's 100? Oh, yeah, 100. I can kind of ease more easily instinctualize that for my budget. Do I have $100 in my budget? Okay. Right, nine ninety seven, effing ridiculous. Stop. Let's stop that. I should make another whole video on that. Right, it is a man manipulation, plain and simple. A lot of you don't realize that, and so a lot of you are parroting, parroting the manipulation that's happening. So no need for that. Right, no need for that. 
So Molly, thanks for asking your question. And yeah, just gift people. It's amazing. $10 founding membership. You know, it's amazing, right? It's great. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your day. And um, remember, you are taken care of always. And it, this path of building an authentic business is a long-term path. Keep doing the right thing. Keep on offering something that feels so good to you. And keep on getting to know your audience so you can know what to offer that they would want. Blessings. Be well.